Link is going to come out. What day? What day? What day? What day? Okay, uh, guys, uh, welcome back. Um, so I was still explaining uh, regarding retained earnings and was saying that step two requires you to have um, your equity elements, okay? Uh, have them at the acquisition date and at the reporting date, then you determine the movement in between. Okay, and then acquisition date, of course, is important for uh, goodwill, as we shall see, yeah? So the task here was, uh, the challenge is that the retained earnings were not given as far as the acquisition date is concerned. We're not given the value of retained earnings at the acquisition date. So we're supposed to do something to obtain that figure, okay? And what we're given is the retained earnings at the start of the year, which is 6,000, and the profits that occurred during the year, which are 8,000. So we're supposed to determine our retained earnings. I remember the acquisition happened between the year. Okay, or within the year, it didn't happen at the beginning of the year. So we're supposed to do something there for the time of figure. And uh, take you back to the working. We're saying that this is what we have. Okay, that's what we have. That uh, we had retained earnings at the start of the year, which is first October at 6,000. Then we had profit for the year. Okay, so uh, this is accounting. Uh, they're supposed to be clear and tell you that maybe this uh, the, the revenues occurred equally uh, evenly within the year. I think there's not somewhere, but if they don't say it, you assume that. Yeah. So, um, how do I therefore determine the profits that I've acquired so far? And we're saying you look at the start of the year and the date on which you acquired. You ask yourself how many months are those that uh, we're looking at? So, uh, you'll agree with me that the months there. Are approximately okay, maybe you can count. This is October, so October, November, then the same. Okay, for three months. Then you look at the three months of uh, 2014. So we're looking at six months here. Yeah, six. Between uh, first October 2013 and first April 2014. So if there's six, it means that the profit profit uh for the first six months can only be uh, six divided by 12 times the profits as we made during the year, which are eight, giving us 4,000. So there are 14 earnings at uh, 1st April 2014. Can only be what we had at the beginning of the year plus what you have acquired in the six months, the first six months, which is four. So we have a 10, yeah. So those are the any earnings we acquired uh, that were there at acquisition date. And it's what you reflect in your table. So you come and say, uh, acquisition date, I had uh, 10 earnings as 10,000. Okay. Then uh, share premium. For share premium, once you, you read Actually, share premium and uh, ordinary shares. Once you read and you're not seeing any information regarding the issue of shares. Okay. Yeah. If you don't see any post uh, issue of shares later, we assume that what you have at the end must be the same that you must have had at the acquisition date because you didn't issue any shares in between. So there's no way they would have increased it already. They can remain the same. So because of that, uh, taking back to my working. You're saying that for share premium to mean the same as 2000, and for non shares to mean the same as 8000. Okay, can I respond to some of the chats? Put on the 4000, please, put on the 10,000. Okay. So we're saying that uh, the normal questions I've been doing, for example, from class, they'll tell you that uh, the acquisition date, the retaining earnings of the subsidiary were 10,000 or 6,000, whatever they give you. Then um, if there are any revolution reserves, they'll tell you revolution of 4,000. Yeah, they will tell you that. 
it's whatever the question. But for this particular question, they hid the information. You're supposed to do something to get that to that start of the year. And I'm saying it's from 1st October 2013. That's the beginning of the year. If the year is ending on 30th September 2014. September 2014. Yeah. It can only have started on 1st October 2013. Okay. But the acquisition happened on 1st April 2014. Meaning within media there, media. So if you have report, if you have profits at the start of the year, and you have profits that occurred within the year, okay, you can determine what you have acquired so far by the time you reach the acquisition date. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you count the months huh, from the year start or from the start of the year till the date of acquisition. When you count from first October. 2013, 1st April 2014, you will get six months. Okay, maybe you can count again. I'm saying you have October, uh, November, December 2013. Then you have January, uh, February, six months, and six. So I'm saying if in the whole year you made profits of 8,000, what would you have made in the first six months? Okay, because uh, an assumption here is that this profit occurred evenly within the year. Okay, unless they say otherwise. So we say in the six months, you can only have acquired 4 million. Why? Because you're saying 12 months, you have 8,000 8, or 8 million. So one month, you can only make a profit of uh, 8 million divided by 12. Acquisition date you can only be 8,000 8, divided by 12 times 6. Okay. That's how we are getting the 4,000. For those asking the 4,000. Then how do I get the 10,000? So we're saying the returning earnings at the date of the year, plus the profit that we have made so far within the six months, which is the 4M, giving us the 10M. Okay, That's how we're getting the 10M at the acquisition date. Okay, I hope I've answered you there. So then um, coming back to our table, so that we finish that evaluation in addition information, which I highly doubt there was. Please check through. Then during the year you sold uh, like that. So there's nothing more about revaluation of land or anything to do with the contingency, whether I made a full payment already or not. Yeah. So uh, because of that, we shall go and do it under uh, the 800 for the reporting date. Okay. And then we determine the movement. The movement is given by the reporting balance minus the acquisition balance. Okay. So there's no there's nothing. There's no movement in owner shares. There's no movement in share capital. There's no move. Okay, there is here. There's a movement for the earnings of only only four thousand. Okay. What happened after the acquisition date was the balance of four thousand. Okay, from the eight. Then here, of course, there's no movement. Okay, and then here there's nothing. Okay. Whenever they want to make uh, this fair value thing a little complicated, what they do is they give you a depreciable asset. If they tell you that maybe a building was revalued, yeah, either they want what you call an extra depreciation, okay. But since this question doesn't have it, let me not go into it, okay. So the land is not depreciable, so you don't have anything to adjust about. So our total is for acquisition is that, and for reporting is that, then the movement is that. Let's put some more chats still. Someone is saying, pardon. Okay, okay. All right, so they're good to go. So after uh, getting this step, step um, two, the next step is step three. You have to determine whether it's goodwill or actually, there's what we call a bargain purchase. Okay, but for our counting three, I think they bring goodwill, not, uh, not watch, not bargain purchase. So goodwill computation. Will computation. So a goodwill arises on a condition that the fair value of the consideration, the fair value of the money that you're paid to acquire the, the net assets, should be greater than the fair value of the net assets acquired. That is when you shall have goodwill. So let's look at our consideration. Consideration what you offered for the goods. So if you go there and uh, see the question, what did you offer to acquire the shares? It was given up here, 
Okay, they say that um, for an agreed consideration of 24.8 million, that is the total consideration, 24.8 million. So let me write it somewhere. 24.85 million. Okay, then they say that this 24.85 million is split into two. Okay, they said the, the consideration was settled by a share exchange of five new shares in H for every three shares acquired in S. Yeah. And then we also have a cash payment of 4.5 million. Now there's a serious note here. They're saying that the cash transaction has been recorded. And if you see clearly or keenly, you find that when you go to the books of H, um, the investment, investment in S is only 4.85 or the 4.85 million, which was the cash consideration. Okay. Otherwise, they say that for the share exchange. It wasn't recorded. Okay, the cash transaction has been recorded, but the share exchange has not. They didn't record it. So we're supposed to do that, they record it for them and do stuff like that. Okay, so if you go to our working therefore, okay. Our working. Okay, we're saying you have a cash consideration, cash uh, paid. It was 4.8, okay. Then our share exchange, share exchange, okay. can only be the balance, eh? which is uh, this minus this, okay, 20,000, okay. So it's supposed to show it, by the way, and so let me show working number, say X, So that figure is supposed to be determined. I've shown you how you determine it, but you can still do it again. Share so saying we agreed on 24. 24, 850. Okay. But cash alone was 48. So giving us the balance, which is the 20,000. Okay, what uh, entries should the company have done? The H, okay. The H should have uh, debited the investment, investment in S with that, and then quitted what? Quit shares, okay. Quit shares, but remember we have share capital and share premium. So we're going to see what was the share premium of the share capital based on the 20M? All right, so here there was really some hard work to do. So, how do we determine this part here? Okay. How we determine is they said that uh, if we just take it back shortly, they said that uh, we made a, a share exchange of five new shares in H for every three held in S. H is saying give away five shares. Okay, let me put it in the table form so that we so you have H or the parent, then you have S. Okay, they're saying you bring five. This one will bring shares. Share. Okay. So how many shares did S uh, did H buy in S? Uh, we remember that he bought over six million shares. This one. Six million. So you come and say, uh, we had six million shares. Okay. So how how much should H give away? Okay, I can just put an X here. You cross my player. Yeah? So it will be three X going to be equal to the five times the six M. So H must have given away. X value is equal to uh, uh, 10,000. 
Can you all see the 10,000 shares? Yeah, the competition. I can use, uh, yes, for clarity, so I didn't make an error. It's 10, yes. Someone saying something. Uh, whose books are we in? The parents, the parents' books that we're in. The parents' subsidiary because that thing confuses me. It's the parents' books that you're looking at, okay? As far as uh, buying, okay, the goodwill is concerned here. Yeah. Once you're on this step, you're looking at the books of the buyer, the one who bought, yeah? So the parent. So we have 10,000 shares, okay? So if you are 10,000 shares, how many, in terms of ordinary shares, how much should think it? How much should the parent have issued, okay? Because you know ordinary shares, the value of ordinary shares then change. So if the ordinary shares, ordinary shares, we're saying this guy, okay, I have to remove the three zeros because the figures are in thousands. So I have the 10,000 shares, but each is so much as far as the um, parent is concerned. Let me confirm. I think it was one shilling still for even the parent. Yeah, <clears throat> equity shares, ordinary shares, each is at one shilling. For both, eh? so one shilling. So if I take it back to the working, I hope I'm recording. Because if I'm not recording, then okay. Uh, times one. <clears throat> okay. So these are since ten thousand one. Okay. This is what the guy offered as far as the other shares are concerned. So that, that signifies that there was a premium, a share premium of, uh, remember, because the guy is paying 10,000. So if he should only 10, so there's a share premium there. So the balance, what we call share premium. Share premium. Which is the balance of 20. You received the 20K, and yet ordinary are only 10,000 shillings worth. So the equity shares, or the share premium, sorry, must be the balance. Hence the 10,000 also. Okay, so the entry is that this guy must have passed, include the following. That you debit your investment in S of 20,000. Then for shares, you're going to credit ordinary shares or share capital. is working what how can i call it sir uh, okay. i think you're seeing the fee all of you okay which is to be ten thousand then the other credit must go to share premium share premium the balance still ten thousand so these transactions here were not reflected by h in his books so you're supposed to do this for him okay um let me see what someone is saying pardon shares please okay yes hope you didn't join late yeah. for shares you're saying these guys the question is clear it said that the total consideration that we agreed upon was 24 eight fifty, and they said part of this consideration cash is going to be for eight fifty. okay and then automatically even if they don't tell you since they agree to use cash and share exchange, the share exchange must carry the balance, which is the 20,000. But the problem is that this 20,000 yeah, wasn't recorded. That's where they think let's do some more work. Otherwise, if it was recorded, we will just come here and say, okay, this consideration is put here, yes, but it's not important. Uh, it's coming from this working of, um, uh, this is 20,000. Saying that the, uh, so this case to be 20,000, like you saw, then you should have a total consideration total, total consideration, total consideration, but consideration for the parent, consideration from H, the parent would be the 24. All right.
But the problem here is that the company only recorded the cash transaction to show that we invested the 4.8 in S, but didn't show the 40, the 20. So now we are supposed to now record it for them. And I will record it for them, you're supposed to know that uh, whenever you're issuing shares, that you must keep in mind that did you issue at a premium or at a discount? Yeah. For that, you can't know, obviously, by just seeing the 20. Okay. You know it after doing computations, like we are seeing here. We say that when you come here, uh, we're saying, first of all, the share, the share exchange was such that H brings five new shares to acquire three shares in S. And the man acquired six million shares in S. So meaning that the shares that H had to issue in order to acquire these 6,000 shares in S, where what you're seeing here is 10,000. I hope you know how to compute this one. Because you cross multiply, this, this. So it could be X three times, X is equal to five times 6,000, which I've shown here, to get the 10,000. These are shares. Let me add the odd shares. These are shares, not the money. The shares. So, and uh, if you remember our from our, our intermediate accounting, our accounting too, when you issue shares, what is constant is the value of ordinary shares will never change. It remains the same. So, the ordinary shares, therefore, are valued at one shilling from the question. Yeah. So meaning that as far as owner shares are concerned, it was 10,000 shares that we issued, 10 million times one, giving us the 10,000. Okay, I don't know the three zeros because the workings are in what? In a thousand, that's why it's just 10,000, not 10 million. Hence times one, yeah, so you get 10. So meaning that if we got 20,000 shillings or million, there must have been a balance. And where is the balance? The balance goes to the share premium. Yeah. So that's how I end up having this. I uh, okay. I hope we are okay. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. So as simple as that. Then we now officially you are done with uh, fair value consideration by the parent. Then you bring the fair value of NCI. Fair value of NCI. The non-controlling interest. The minority shareholder the one who owns the 25% that is remaining. Okay, for this one, they gave us the fair value in the question. I can take you there. Okay. Mm, well. Yeah, they said they're not for, that uh, it's the group's policy to value non-controlling interest at its full value or full fair value. At the date of acquisition, and at this date, it was 9 million. So you bring the 9 million. Which is 9,000. Then officially, now you have total consideration. So you add. Have a 3-3. Yeah. Then from the two consideration, we list the watch. The net, uh, let me just bring the whole thing. Fair value of uh, net assets. Assets acquired. Okay. You know, these ones come from working. So you just go to the working to acquisition column and you get that figure. Yeah. Okay. Acquisition column, yeah. Balance 24. Okay, so it's uh, negative because it's supposed to be less from it. Okay, and then you have a goodwill. Okay, um, so that is working. Number three. So you have a goodwill of 9,000. Then you can go to working number four. Working number four usually is you look at the additional information. Yeah. So uh additional information says that uh, during the year there was trade, what you call intercompany transactions. Uh H bought okay, H sold goods of eight hundred thousand at the margin of 
to us, but none of these goods had been sold to party outside the group. Now, intercompany transactions, it is only important, especially selling price, is only a big deal if you have inventory left within the group. So when you're reading this statement, usually uh, you're looking out for non realizable profit, especially if they ask for the statement of financial position. Because if they ask for the statement of profit or loss, even this 800,000 is important, you go under revenues and remove it, go under cost of sales and remove this very figure. However, for statement of financial position, you're interested in the non, what you call the unrealized profit. Okay. And that unrealized profit arises on inventory that is still within the group. So here they're telling you that S did not sell anything, eh? but none of these goods had been sold to out, outside the group. So meaning the entire stock, the way you took it to S, it is still there. Now we have analyzed profit. Okay, sometimes they will tell you 50% is, is within the group, then you compete for 50%. So allow me to take it to our workings, okay, 800 at margin. Uh, to search selling. So working number number three, number four, the company. Company transactions. Okay. H sold. The parent sold to S. Okay. So we know that whenever there's a sell, the parent on selling the NCI or the uncompeting interest is not affected. The one who sells them is affected. So the group return earnings of H of our group are the ones that are affected by the unrealized profit. So what is the unrealized profit? Or maybe you can first get the profit alone. Profit, profit uh, on sale. Okay, it is margin. So whenever it is margin, you just multiply the percentage. That's 20% times the selling price, which was 800,000. So the figures and thousands, so I want to carry it all. It's 0 0.2 times 10. This is the profit. Now you ask yourself, what's the unrealized profit? Realized profit. Okay, the unrealized profit is what stock is remaining. Now the beauty here is that the entire stock is remaining. So 100% of the entire profit is still unrealized. So you bring here your 160. So the entries are that you go under group retained earnings and you remove this figure. And then you go to your inventory and remove this figure. So I have to remove that so that I don't forget it. More light on the NCI. Okay, we're going to do the competition. I'll explain more when you're in the competition, which is working number, I think six or something. So I was saying, I won't forget this one. So let me do this. So I'll go to my consolidated statement of, of um, financial position under inventory. Okay, then you get the inventory for the parent. Okay, I will just bring them later. Let me first remove this one, 60. Okay, then you come under group retained earnings. We are under this one, which is the next working by the five group. And you have the value of the okay, value. You have all of the parents, all of H's retained earnings. Um, then you have the unrealized profit. Okay. And six is removed, so it's deducted. So let me show that. So I'm done with working number four. Okay. Um, someone asking about the unrealized profit. Shall I look at it? Eh? Let me first do this. So working number five, group retained earnings, which is the next working. Here you look at uh, the parents' entire pro uh, profit. So if I may go there and bring the parents' entire retained earnings. Okay, I think there's another intercompany. They're saying included in the respective accounts. Uh, current accounts balances of 5,000. Yeah, this is what they call intercompany. Here, they try to just be tricky by saying current accounts. 
but they mean that uh, in somebody's receivables, we have 5,000. In somebody's payables, we have 5,000. Yeah, so this was the intercompany balances that we have. Let me take you back to that point. It's another working. So will come later. Five intercompany, still intercompany. Transactions. In this case, these were balances. Okay. So we know that the payables have to be reduced the entire 5k 5005 then uh, receivables have to be reduced as you can see the entries are the reverse yeah, the reverse okay then uh, back to our group time earnings i was saying that you bring the entire time earnings for the parent Okay, I know I'm not doing time, but for intercompany balances, it's only tricky yeah? if there is a uh, cash in transit. That's when you have something to do. But otherwise, if it is straight like this, there's no cash in transit. They're saying that current accounts in they have a balance of five thousand, meaning that somebody's receiving has five thousand, and another person's payable has five thousand. You just cancel the transaction or reverse the entries. That payables has a normal credit balance, so it's a liability. How do I remove it? I debit. The syllables is an asset, it has a normal debit balance. I want to remove it. How do I do that? I call it as simple as that. Okay, so back to retained earnings. So for group retained earnings, we are saying um, for the parent, yeah, you have at the start of the year also 51 uh, to 60. And then the closing is 12,000. So just add to get the closing balance. Which is what somebody's saying. But it's better than removing the... Yeah. Okay. Uh, later, Smaya, just in a few. Let's do the so For the parent, we're saying you bring the 51 to 50. I hope I remember, remember the figure well. Then plus 12,000. When you add that 51 to 50, that's the 12,000, get 63 as the retained earnings for the parent. Okay, um, someone was asking about the unrealized, yes, unrealized profit, Smaya, or any other person who's interested. It is on a sale of inventory. Keyword is inventory. Yeah, the normal stock that you sell for normal business. Okay, so the unrealized profit only arises on stock that you have sold to maybe a subsidiary or the subsidiary sold to the parent, and that stock. Is remaining with the parent or the subsidiary, whoever has bought. If the stock is still available or still around, we have what they call unrealized profit. Okay, so what happened in this question is the profit is clear is 160 on the entire on the entire continuous on the entire sale. It is 160. However, we're only interested in what is still remaining in the group. So what is remaining in the group, unfortunately, they say that they didn't sell anything. Okay, the, the one who bought did not sell anything out there. So meaning that the entire stock is still remaining. Hence, 100%, and hence the entire profit is still unrealized. Okay, so if, what, what do you do with that? Now what we do is, um, in group accounts, we say that you cannot make a profit on yourself. Okay, because with group accounts, the assumption is that you want people. So where you're selling, to each other on a profit, then that's not really a profit. Yeah. It only becomes a profit if if uh, the person you have sold it to sells it elsewhere. So because of that, you're supposed to remove it. So what you do is, remember the one who bought inventory is having the cost plus the markup, or the cost plus the profit, that's the value of his inventory. So that inventory is overstated by the profit. 
That's why you come and deduct the 160. Then the one who sold is also saying that I made a profit. And we're saying your profit was overstated because in reality, you cannot sell on profit to a brother or a sister, whatever it is. Yeah. Hence, your profit also has to be reduced. So that's why we're saying it is important to know who has sold, first of all, so that we know whose profit is being affected directly. So H is the one who sold, meaning that the profit of H is the one being affected directly. And that's why I'm bringing it here. Yeah just after his profits entire figure okay if the subsidiary is on what is sold it will be different and i don't want to go into that because of time because the way time is really running so fast i'm eh? now left with one minute on this link so let me respond to your questions if you have any so far from what we discussed so that when it closes we can just uh, resume with uh, group retaining earnings and do non-controlling interest and then close okay uh, my concern is whose inventory is reduced. The one who bought, yeah, the one who bought is whose inventory is being reduced directly. So in this case, S is the one who bought. So S's inventory is the one being bought, being reduced by the 160. Okay, I've just said that the one who has bought, his inventory is overstated by that profit. Then the one who has sold, his profit is being overstated by that profit. It's what I've just said. All right. So um, that is basically analyzed profit. Okay. So uh, the link is going to close shortly. So please join through the same link. All right. Then we just continue with the group design earnings. I hope this time a um, bit faster since there are no more tricks. And then we finish. At least this will be the last link. God will. Yeah. Okay. See you shortly uh, as the link closes.